In the Old Covenant, God chose the Israelites to be his people and obey his laws. In Jesus Christ, we are the people of the New Covenant, which came into being by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, whose we are and whom we serve. We bear his name, and in baptism and in holy communion, we live a life of faith and hope and love. In the strength of this new covenant, we gladly meet now to worship God together 
and bless each other. And to God be all the glory. Please sit down. Today is a special day for this congregation. As we welcome Donald McCorkadale as our new session clerk. Today, we also welcome Carol Foster from the Food Bank to receive our Advent bags. We are glad that you are able to be here today. And to all of you here, and for those of you on the live stream and the recording, we are glad to be together wherever we are, to worship God and to know and to acknowledge the many blessings that there are in worship, in faith and in congregational life. <coughs> so you are all most welcome. I have some intimations. The Kirk Session will meet on Monday the 16th of January at half past seven in the Peter Room. Reports and proposed agenda items should be given to Donald by next week. I'm going to be away at a conference from tomorrow, that's Monday until Thursday. And while I can be reached by phone and email, as usual, any immediate and emergency pastoral cover will be kindly provided by the Rev. John Urquhart of Colmores. Next Sunday, the 15th of January, we will be welcoming Nicola and David into the church as they bring their son Lucas for baptism. Our warm space in the hall, where all are welcome, will be open on Tuesdays from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and Toasty Tuesday is from 4 o'clock until 5 o'clock, and Soup on Friday, and Fridays at 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock. Or all are welcome in this warm space for company and chat and TV and tea and coffee and a bite to eat. So please come along and please let your neighbours know about this. During our worship here, there is a rota for the breakout space over in the hall for any families. And you are welcome to go over to the hall and we'll catch up with you at coffee time. On Monday the 9th of January, Moscow Rural will meet in the Hog Hall at Goldsmith at 2 o'clock. And on Thursday the 12th of January, Fenwick Rural will meet in the Church Hall at 2 o'clock. And I also have a note for Fenwick's committee that you will be meeting on Tuesday the 10th of January at 2 o'clock over in the hall. And these are all the intimations that I have today. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We remain seated as we receive the offering in song. Let's sing together. Praise God.
sanctified by word and sacrament. May we praise your name together. We worship in freedom and gladness. 
but it was not always this way. And so we thank you in gratitude for the saints who have gone before us, building your church from living stones in Jesus' name. May we praise your name together. We worship in peace and in safety and security. But it is not this way for many in the world who live in places of oppression and conflict. We thank you for this nation where we are, where life is cherished and help is always at hand. For the help from others is help that you send. May we praise your name together. Today we remember your calling of all of us back into your kingdom. We are no longer our own, but yours through your Son and our Saviour Jesus Christ, given by you to be in the same place as we are, to live our lives with us, to be the way to strive in personal and congregational discipleship, to love and serve you better. May we praise your name together. Forgive us when we forget you, when our focus becomes less than you want for us and expect of us. We are sorry that in the doing of what we do, we so often forget and we are doing it in your name. And so those we care for and care about forget you too. Gather us once more to you this morning. May our worship and praise, our words and thoughts, our personal devotions and our music all be pleasing to you and bring you all the glory. May we praise your name together. For Jesus' sake, for he has taught us to come to you. He is the way to you. So hear us now as we do pray together the words which Jesus Christ said that we should say to you, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, last week we were talking about water and how we all need it. But we were also talking about floods and we were talking about all the rain and we've had plenty of that again this week. But today the sun is shining. But Carol, we know that you had a flood at the food bank and that was that caused by burst pipes during the very cold weather and you've had to move the food bank to somewhere else until your warehouse is fit to use again and we hope that happens soon. But I want to tell you that even before your flood, we had all decided during Advent that we would read some of the Christmas story each day and for every day of Advent we would put something in our brown bags for the food bank. And in front of you, you can see some of the bags and I know that Jean's car book has already been full up and emptied so that it can be filled up once more. Carol, we are very glad that you could come today to receive all these bags and we ask God to bless all that you do for the people of this area who are in need of food and other common necessities. For all of us, no matter what our age is, it is good to share what we have and we are glad to do it. So as we share with each other, let's share the messy church blessing. Let's say it together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And you can hold each other's hands if you want. <laughs> the love. <laughs> and the friendship.
friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. There we go. So as we think about the world in which we live and our sharing, let's sing together our next hymn. Christ be our light.
This reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 27 to 31. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will faint and not be faint. Amen. And God bless his reading from his holy works. Chapter 1, verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. We stand to sing our next hymn. We stand to sing, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
a new chapter in the life of this congregation as Donald becomes our latest session clerk. This appointment is made by the Kirk session and accepted by Donald. And so today, we are glad to bring Donald before you to make his promise, the oath de fidele and ministry. I promise to carry out faithfully the duties of session clerk as instructed by the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. So Donald, may I invite you to come forward. With God's help, will you serve this Kirk session and congregation so that all that is done is done in love and service and in the Lord's name and to his glory. Please say after me, I promise to carry out faithfully the duties of session clerk. I promise to carry out faithfully the duties of session clerk. Kirk session and congregation, will you please stand? <laughs> and your response is also, we will. With God's help, will you hold Donald in your hearts and prayers and be always ready to support him as he is ready to support you? And now the responses. We are all called to share the Lord's command to love and serve. We are called to share in the one ministry of Christ. We are called to share the different ways of serving God. Please sit down. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, you are a God of faithfulness and love. You have called each one of us and you will not fail us. We ask you to bless Donald as he becomes session clerk to the Kirk session of the Fenwick Parish Church. Prosper the work of his hands as he labours in your precious name. Bless and you, each member of this Kirk session, making all worthy of you and of those whose commitment, sacrifice, love and prayers have enriched the life of this congregation and nourish the people who live within the boundaries of this parish and the world beyond from generation to generation. May we all be living stones in the building of your kingdom. Bless Kevin as he rests from his long labours of serving you faithfully as Session Clark and prosper the new works which he takes up in love and service and mission to the people of the parish and beyond. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Donald, please accept this gift of a prayer book as you take up your new post. We are glad to have you with us. Good morning, everyone. I, I stand before you this morning very humble, very privileged to take up this position as your session clerk. Um, I promise that I will do everything I can during my tenure to further the cause of this beautiful church. And given that this is the church's 380th birthday this year, um, and I know Kevin's not been in the session club for all those three years. <laughs> um, it is indeed a privileged time. To the session, it's the, the Kirk session who um, appointed me. 
I thank you very much indeed for your trust, and I, I will do my very best not to let you down. To Kim, who has been a source of encouragement um, since I, I came to Fenwick Church a couple of years ago, um, even during some of my recent troubled times, some family issues with Kim has been a, a rock for me, so thank you for that, Kim. And we're really, really lucky to have you as a minister. What can we say about um, Kevin? Um, Kevin and I have grown into a friendship, I think, in the last couple of years since we've been here. I've been able to see um, from behind the, the scenes, behind the curtains, just the amount of work that he does. Um, but not just Kevin, I've realised that so much work goes on in this church that's probably going unnoticed. Van Campbell produced last Sunday an absolutely beautiful prayer of intercession. And actually, when I was sitting up in the loft, and listening to the prayer, I realised just how much work goes on. Thank you for that, Brad, and thank you to everyone that you mentioned in that prayer last week. You're all a very, very valuable part of this, this church. Um, and all the work that you do, thank you. I'd just like to leave the congregation in general and, and everyone with one thought. A wise woman once said, people may forget what you say, people may forget what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. If we can do work with each other using that premise, I'm sure we'll be able to just fine. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words, Donald. Today is a special day when we welcome Donald as our new session clerk. However, at the same time, we must recognise all that Kevin, our retiring session clerk, has done for this parish and this community, this congregation and the current session. Now, much more will be said about this at the annual stated meeting as we review our past year. But meantime, Kevin, please accept this gift given by the congregation with love and warm affection and in recognition of all that you have done for all of us and on behalf of the church station and the congregation. I'm going to return it back up to the pulpit now because I brought something with me. Many people do. 
Achilles, and he tucked the fiddle under his chin. And guess what happened next? It made a terrible noise. It made a terrible noise. And he was so disappointed because he had only ever heard people playing fabulous tunes that he could clap his hands to and stamp his feet and dance. And he wanted to do that so much. But it didn't happen for him. And he ran away upstairs and shut his bedroom door. And his mum and dad went up and spoke to him after a while and said to him, it's not that easy. You've got to start somewhere. There's loads and loads of tunes inside that fiddle. And you'll be able to get them out. But not today. You'll have to practice. And so, Angus got used to that idea. And he went for lessons. And he learned how to play his fiddle. And he practiced and he practiced. And after not very many years, he became a fabulous fiddler, <coughs> playing for Kayleigh's, playing on his own. But he always remembered that very first time when he opened the case and tried to play it. Now, you can see that I brought my fiddle with me, but I'm not going to give you a solo from the pulpit so you can relax. I don't do solos. I'm very definitely a Cayley band player. But I can identify with Angus. For I can remember when I was learning to play, well, it's called a violin, when I learned to play it. It was a school instrument. And even then, the sound that I was making was not good. Practicing scales and finger positions had to be done. But I didn't enjoy doing it on my own. And I'm fairly sure that anyone with an earshot didn't enjoy it either. As a pupil, I liked to play in student high school orchestra. There was safety in numbers. And being together with the others, making music was a great feeling. As well as sounding pretty good as school orchestras go. After I left school, I didn't play for a few years, but then I was offered a fiddle that had been in the family for a few generations. It had been lying at the back of a cupboard and then put in a loft, unused for many, many years. And that fiddle is the fiddle that I showed you today. When it was given to me, the wooden case that it was in had woodwork. So the fiddle had to be taken out, the case burnt, and a new case bought. The fiddle needed quite a lot of TLC. It was missing some of the bits that were necessary. But I got a new bow, and I had some more lessons, and I joined the Strathbay and Real Society in Kilmarnock, and the John Knox Cayley Band in Stewarton. <coughs> and I have to tell you, what a gift. Scottish music and dancing has been for me. For playing, for all of us who enjoy playing together, and amazingly, for the folks who come to Cayleys and weddings and other social events, who listen and dance while we play together. The tunes were always in that for me. Probably so many more tunes than I've ever heard it. They were there, but it took a bit of work and a bit of effort to get them out. And I want to remind you that although these are stories of fiddle playing, they are also stories of life and living to love and serve in the kingdom. Yes, it's true. There are some individuals like Angus became who are very gifted on their own. But you know what? Most of us give of our best as part of a group, or a team, or a family, or a community. And today, 
We especially remember the leaders of this congregation and parish, the Kirk Session, its clerk, and we remember those who lead the support teams in the Kirk Session. For God created us to be part of his kingdom, to be together with others, and in that togetherness to be the best that we can be for him. We weren't created ready to hit the ground running. We were created to learn and develop and to practice our skills and talents so that we get better at what we do and to find the others that we can be with so that we can serve, so that we are working and being and loving together. And when we do this in God's name and in Jesus' service, sustained by prayer and faith, we find new strengths and skills. We find the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us and grow in us. This is what we do. And then we find new energies and fulfillment and gladness, gifts, that we may not have set out to achieve, but precious gifts that God bestows on us. So, Donald, may you find this in your new post in this congregation, and may we all find that precious gift as we live and love and work and serve together as the congregation of Fenwick Parish Church, today and always. A new generation of God's people in this place together, in worship and in mission, in Jesus' name. And because he has invited us and commanded us so to do. And to his name be all the glory. Let's pray together as we pray our prayers of dedication of our offerings and we pray for one another. Loving God, take our gifts and giving of what we have and use them to grow your kingdom, to bring the gospel of Christ to people who have no experience of Jesus' love and for all your purposes and plans. Bring wisdom to those who will use the money in Jesus' name. For Christ has no hands on this earth but ours to do good. No eyes on this earth but ours to see need. No feet on this earth but ours to follow Jesus to where the need is. As we have given, fill our hearts with compassion and our souls with your Holy Spirit that we may better serve you through serving others. And now we ask that you hear our prayers for each other. Loving Lord, you were homeless at the time of your birth, and so we ask for your love and care on those who are hungry and homeless today. You were a refugee fleeing persecution, and we ask for your love and care on all those displaced by climate emergency and hunger and oppression and war. You were rejected even before you were born, dismissed during your life, threatened as a child and served in justice as an adult. And even now, rejected by many. We ask for your love and care on people who are rejected by us and by society, who do not know hospitality and warmth and love. We ask your blessing and healing on all those we know who are ill or lonely, waiting, struggling and anxious. Show us what we can do as well as bring them to you in prayer. We pray for one another as this new year begins. Bless us and guide us as we journey together. We ask your blessing on our king and his family and governments. Bring them strength 
and Greece. We pray for our mission partner Fiona and our friends in Sri Lanka. Bless the work of your church in the world, its mission and mission staff at home and abroad, and especially for the life and witness of our national church in Scotland. Bless and bring strength to all who seek to serve you and each other. In Jesus' name, all this we ask for his sake. Amen. And so we stand to sing our final hymn, I'll go in the strength of the Lord.